Hi, I'm Tom Hoppin, Application Specialist at Agilent, and I'm here to talk to you about the Field Clock series of handheld analyzers. More specifically, we're going to talk about their use in radar field testing. For today's example, we're going to use both a commercial and military system. As we know, in today's world, radars are used everywhere, all the way from weather prediction to traffic control. What we'll be talking about today, though, are mission critical systems. Those are ones that our customers have told us need to be up 24-7, or human lives will be at stake. Those systems, of course, need routine maintenance, and they need occasional troubleshooting and repair. What our customers have told us is that they had to, in the past, take their benchtop equipment into the field to achieve the kind of accuracy they need to assure system performance. Now, FieldFox offers the same kind of measurement performance that equates exactly or correlates very precisely to those made with benchtop instruments. So FieldFox is the ideal choice for making those radar measurements in the field. Our test system today includes two signal generators. The first is a lower frequency signal generator used to generate the pulse stream from an air traffic control civilian radar. The second is a higher frequency signal generator used to generate pulses for a military system at 10 and 40 gigahertz. Also, we'll be using the peak power sensor and FieldFox. So let's take a look at those signals. Our first example is of a military air defense radar system. We've created a simple CW FM pulse at the frequency of 10 gigahertz. We can very quickly characterize this with our markers so we can see that we've got a pulse width of about one microsecond and then we've got a pulse repetition interval of 10 microseconds. What I'd like to show you now is how we can make these same measurements using the peak power sensor. I've now connected the U2022XA series peak power sensor to the signal generator and I've switched modes on the field box from spectrum analysis to pulse measurements, which is option 330. You'll immediately notice that the pulses are more crisp than in the spectrum analyzer mode. That's because the spectrum analyzer is limited to a resolution bandwidth of 5 megahertz, while the power sensor is wideband, so it's able to capture more of the pulse spectral characteristics. Now we can still make marker measurements of the pulse as we did before, but what I'd like to show you that's even more important is our ability to do auto analysis. And as you'll see, we immediately triggered on the pulse and we're able to now see all the pulse metrics. The average peak, peak to average, the pulse top in amplitude, the pulse width, and the pulse repetition interval very simply. Now I've set up my signal generator to output a pulse stream from a MODES air traffic control system. These systems are used worldwide by almost every international airport. What we're able to see here is the pulse strings from the MODES interrogator and then also the signaling. Let's measure the pulse width using our markers. This is a very simple process. We can measure the pulse repetition interval. We can also measure phase reversal timing. And what these phase reversals are is phase shift keying that the interrogating radar is sending a block of data to the aircraft transponder that will return position data. In this video I've shown you how to make accurate pulse characterizations with FieldFox. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are a number of other capabilities in FieldFox that make it ideal for field testing of radar, including InstaLine, Spectrum Analyzer Time Gating, Burst Triggering, Pre and Post Trigger Delay. In fact, FieldFox can make all of the required LRU tests for both of the two kinds of radar systems we've shown you today. I'd like to direct you to this URL and also pay particular attention to the application notes you'll find there that relates to correlating measurements between FieldFox and benchtop instruments. Thank you for watching.